814, I'll pause there while I had to uh, cough from allergies, and that's a true story. More than 50 million Americans suffer from allergies each year, making it one of the most common chronic health conditions. Our friend Dr. B, Dr. Brent Wallace, Chief Medical Officer of People's Health, joins us. Let's talk about the allergies, about allergies rather, and how to manage them. How you doing, Dr. B? Hey, Tommy, I'm doing great, except for these allergies. Yeah, do you suffer as well? <laughs> oh, terribly, terribly. Is there anybody that doesn't? <laughs> Very few people, it seems like, here in Louisiana. Man, and I got oak trees in front of my house, and it has been brutal. I guess we should start with what is an allergy. Yeah, sure. So, you know, there's a lot of different types of allergies that people suffer from. But in general, an allergy really occurs when your immune system reacts to a substance in the environment. So something that's usually harmless to, to a lot of people your body perceives as something dangerous. And those substances are called allergens. And it can be really um, anything in the, in the environment. It can be something you eat, like eggs or seafood are very common. Um, something you breathe in, like pollen, obviously right now, and mold here in, in Louisiana. Or something you touch, like latex or, or even laundry detergent. And are there some other common kind of allergens? Yeah, you can really be allergic to just about anything. You know, some of the most common types we see pretty frequently insects, you know, obviously bee stings or mosquito bites people can have a severe reaction to. Um, medication allergies are relatively common, especially to things like aspirin or um, certain types of antibiotics like penicillin. And then a lot of people actually have pet allergies, and, and some don't even realize it, but they're usually reacting to either the dander or even the saliva from cats and dogs. Megan Fox could, um, Fox could offer to marry me, Doc, but if she had a cat, I'd have to pass. Because I just can't. <laughs> yeah, do. yeah, I've made my wife get rid of ours. <laughs> what? I didn't know you're married to Megan Fox. What is? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what is an allergic reaction? Yeah, so the allergic reaction itself is when your immune system, like I said, identifies an allergen and considers it foreign, so something that's not supposed to be in your body, so it may harm you. And so it reacts, you know, uh, when you come into contact with that allergen, and it really causes kind of a, a whole host of reactions. It can be anything simple like itching. It could be a, a rash or hives. Um, some people get a lot of watery red eyes, um, definitely sneezing and runny nose. Um, more severe reactions can include even trouble breathing. Um, you know, most allergic reactions are relatively mild, but there are a few that can be really life-threatening, and, and the, the severity of that reaction really depends on how threatened your body feels by the allergen it's exposed to. So what is going on in your body when you have a severe allergic reaction? So, you know, really the most severe reaction we see is something called anaphylaxis. And um, what that means is that the immune system, you know, reacts ex extremely to the allergen it's been exposed to, and it releases this flood of chemicals. And those chemicals actually can cause you to go into shock. Um, it actually dilates your blood vessels, and so you can get a sudden drop in your blood pressure. People can pass out. Um, it can narrow the airways in your bronchioles and your lungs, so you can have trouble breathing. Um, you can also develop a sudden onset rash, um, you know, trouble with your heart, rapid, weak pulse, and even nausea and vomiting. So it's an extremely uh, severe reaction. So with anaphylaxis, that's the most severe allergic reaction you can have? Yeah, anaphylaxis is really the, the top of the list, and most people, fortunately, don't suffer from anaphylaxis. They usually have a much milder reaction. Can you treat it? Yeah, fortunately you can, but the you know because the reaction is so severe, you have to treat it very quickly. Sometimes that can occur within seconds or minutes after you've been exposed to something that you're allergic to. So treatment is really critical, and, and usually what we use is an injection of epinephrine, um, you may be familiar with the term EpiPen. Mm -hmm. EpiPen is a little device you can kind of jam on your leg, and it immediately injects epinephrine into your system, and that can start to reverse some of these severe allergic symptoms that you're having. But the one thing people have to keep in mind is even if the EpiPen works, 
you really do need to follow up with a doctor. And if it's your first reaction and somebody used their EpiPen on you, you definitely want to go to the emergency room. There's something we see called a biphasic anaphylaxis. What that means is you can actually get a secondary reaction. So you get better from the original anaphylaxis reaction after the EpiPen, but then you can get a rebound reaction that can sometimes be even more severe. So keep in mind, that's why it's important to be evaluated by a doctor after a real severe reaction. I would think, generally speaking, if a layman is sticking something in you to save your life, to keep you alive, it's best to see the doctor. (laughs) That is always, always a good plan. Where do allergies come from, and are they genetic? Yeah, there is actually a genetic component, so they can they can be inherited, which means they can be passed from parents to children. And and actually, what we see typically is if one of your parents has allergy problems, you're 50 percent more likely to have allergies. And if both of your parents have allergies, you're about 75 percent more likely. But the the thing that's interesting is you don't inherit specific allergies. Um, really, everybody is a little bit different in what they react to, and we don't fully understand why you develop allergies to some things and not to others but if your you know uh, mom for example has a cat allergy it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to have one you may be allergic to a certain type of food it's interesting can they change as you age yeah absolutely um you know it's pretty common actually for kids to have allergies but often they will outgrow those allergies as they get older Um, Up to about 80% of kids who have a milk allergy or an egg allergy usually have outgrown that by the time they're 16. And about 20% of kids who have peanut allergies, which can be very common, will eventually outgrow it as well. But then the other thing that's really critical to understand, a lot of people don't realize, you can develop allergies at any age. So, you know, as you get older, you can suddenly find yourself reacting to something you never had a problem with before. And and about 10% of all adults have at least one food allergy. So that's something to keep in mind. And, you know, I'll tell you, about two or three years ago, I developed a strawberry allergy out really? of nowhere. Yeah, and so no more strawberry festival for me, which is very upsetting. Well, you can still go to the festival. Just don't eat any strawberries. Yeah, yeah, stay clear. Yeah, all right, we'll take a, <laughs> eat some crawfish. We'll take a break. We come back. We'll talk about seasonal change. With allergies, Dr. B, Dr. Brent Wallace, Chief Medical Officer of People's Health, I don't know of anybody that is not suffering with allergies in the springtime in New Orleans. 821, traffic now, WWL. 826, Tommy Tucker, WWL. Tim all over it with the bumper music. Expose with seasons change as we talk to Dr. B. Dr. Brent Wallace from People's Health, 50 million Americans plus suffering from allergies each year. We know what we go through it down here. Do they change with the seasons, Doc, allergies? Yeah, definitely they do. I mean, we know all about that here in Louisiana. And what it is is certain allergens are more common at at different times of the year. And um, so whenever you have one of those types of allergies, it's called a seasonal allergy. And they can vary in severity, just like we were talking about, but most do cause itching and sneezing and sometimes even trouble breathing. Um, You know, right now in the spring, tree pollens are extremely high. Oak, like you were mentioning, Um, and fir trees actually as well are very high. In the spring, you know, we tend to see tree pollens, but also some grass pollens as well. And then when you get into the fall, you actually pick up uh, ragweeds in particular. And, um, And then in the winter, it's kind of interesting because we spend more time indoors in the winter. You tend to have more indoor allergen problems, things like mold and dust mites. How cumbersome is it to be tested for allergies? Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people figure out what they're allergic to on their own, but it sometimes can be very helpful to do allergy testing. And um, the old type of allergy testing, you know, where they drew a grid on your back and and pricked you a whole bunch of times, we still can do that. But there are easier skin tests that can be done now where they put a, a strip a sticky strip on your back, and then they can read it a couple of days later to see what you react to. We even have blood tests, actually, that can detect sensitivity to a lot of allergens, um, you know, things like latex and certain types of pollen and even foods. Um, So you should definitely talk to your doctor or an allergist if you think you want to get skin tested. Any tips for managing allergies? Yeah, I mean, the absolute most important thing for allergies is to reduce your exposure to whatever triggers you. And, um, you know, now that it's springtime, you know, using tree pollen as an example, if you've got a tree pollen allergy, 
you want to you want to check and see what the pollen counts are each day because it may change what you want to do. There's a great website called pollen.com, www.pollen.com. You put in your zip code and it tells you what's high. And so right now, oak is high. If you react to that, you probably don't want to go outside and, and mow your lawn right now because you want to wait for a day, maybe after it's rained when the pollen's a little bit less before you do those outdoor activities. You know, you can wear a face mask outside as well. That'll help prevent that inhalation of those pollens. And then, you know, managing your uh, indoor allergies, you really want to make sure you keep a clean home. You want to wash your bedding really frequently, uh, keep your doors and windows closed during the spring and summertime so those pollens aren't coming in. Um, you know, it's hard here because we do have mold in our homes quite often, so you want to use dehumidifiers if, if you have a problem with that. And then keep, keep your house well vacuumed. But keep in mind, if you've got allergies, you shouldn't be the one doing the vacuuming. You should get someone else to do it for you, which is what I tell my wife. And, um, and then the other thing you can do is really uh, talk to your doctor about over-the-counter allergy medications. There's a lot of things you can use available in the, in the pharmacies, but you want to make sure you talk to your doctor so you make sure it doesn't react with anything else you may be taking. Can you write me a note to explain to my neighbors why I'm not cutting the grass and get me out of it? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. B. A pleasure as always. All right, Tommy, you too. Have Dr. a great weekend. You too. Dr. Brent Wallace, Chief Medical Officer of People's Health. You can always find out more about People's Health by going to peopleshealth.com. You can visit the People's Health Medicare Center at 3017 Vets in Metairie. Appointments are recommended, but walk-ins are welcome. You can call 1-800-978-9765. You can always follow People's Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. When we come back, we'll talk to Representative Stephanie Hilferty about a bill that she's proof pre-filed to expand the rights of victims of violent crime right now. Time for WWL First News. For that, we go to Dave Cohen.